Is everybody ready for a good story? Yeah. <laughs> now, when I was a, when I was a school teacher for about 40 years, one thing that I insisted on, or, or they weren't in my classroom, and that is they have to be quiet. I had a sign up on the wall that says, "Silence is golden. Let us be rich." So I want all of you to be real quiet, okay? First thing I'd like to talk about is, you know, it's been quite a while since before we've had the family together like this in a picturesque setting such as we have here tonight, and I, I appreciate it very much, Mother and I. And we want all of you to know how much that we, we love you very, very much. The only thing I regret is we've got family members who are not with us tonight, uh, but wherever they are, we hope that they're enjoying life the same as we are tonight. But the story we're going to talk about tonight is about a is about a big old bear. And this is a real story and most of the adults around here have have heard this story. But that's all right. Uh, this isn't your turn to tell a story. It's my turn to tell a story and as we go along, uh, if there are some pieces I miss uh, you can throw in some bits and here and there and we'll make the story just a little more exciting. But this story takes place back in about 1923. That's uh, just about as old as your grandmother is. <laughs> of course I'm just about the same age as grandma is too. But there was a man from Malad and his name was Frank Clark. You know, years ago, back in the 20s and the 30s, and they even do it today, they would take big herds of sheep up into the mountains. They would take them up there to get them fat so they'd make a lot of money, hopefully. And they would always have a herder. And the, the name of this herd and when I was reviewing this story a little bit, it was quite interesting to me. The name of this uh, company, the sheep company up in Logan Canyon, it was called uh, the Ward uh, Clark Sheep Company. And the thing that I found most interesting was that this uh, Frank Clark he lived in Cherry Creek, Idaho, and that's right where Delton Ward lives. That's uh, Mark Ward's father. And I'm just betting that uh, Delton Ward, uh, perhaps he wasn't, but I'm betting maybe a brother or a uncle, in-law or outlaw, somebody in that family owned part of that sheep company up in Logan Canyon, but Frank Clark was the man he was chosen to herd these sheep. And what they would do, they would take a sheep camp up into the mountains, and usually one man would be with that sheep camp. And most of us who are a little older, we all remember that sheep camp. Uh, what it looked like. And they would take that sheep camp up as far as they could up into the mountains. And then when they couldn't take the camp any further, they would just abandon the camp and they would go on up with just a tent. And this is, this is what this Frank Clark was doing. And he was herding all of these sheep for this sheep company. Well, he took the sheep camp as far as he could up into the mountains and herded sheep all summer long. He very seldom saw people. All summer long he would be alone. And by nature he was a quiet man. That was because he had nobody to talk to. 
And all he, all he had to keep him company was uh, well, three things actually that all of these sheep herders always had was a, a horse, at least one horse, and a dog, and a rifle. And they would, he would always have those three things with him when he was out herding the sheep. So here Frank Clark was, he was up in Logan Canyon herding these sheep and there's several little canyons going this way and that way but let's just call it up in Logan Canyon where he was herding all of these sheep and it was in 1923, it was during uh, the month of August, I think it was August 21st, 1923. And there had been a lot of stories about bears up in that area. Now bears in this area, the Logan area, back in 1923, that wasn't at all uncommon. There were quite a few black bears, there were brown bears, and different kinds of bears. But there was very little talked about in the way of grizzly bears. And nobody even thought there were any grizzly bears in this area. Now grizzly bears do live, and they live up uh, north of us, up in Yellowstone Park and some areas, but in this area down in the Logan Canyon area, there just weren't supposed to be any grizzly bears. But this old sheep herder, he was up there all alone, and once in a while, another man would come in, maybe once every <coughs> three or four weeks, would bring in some what they'd call grub. And that was simply supplies to keep the sheep herder going. And he would stay there alone all summer long. They usually had the, the sheep wagon. He'd have the few horses. He'd have, always had his rifle with him. When we talk about a rifle, <coughs> I used to own a rifle. It was a 25-20 rifle and it would hold 14 bullets. It wasn't really that strong of a rifle. It wasn't big enough that I'd like to go hunting bear with it, but I had it and I would go hunting deer with it. In fact, I killed a, an elk with that 25-20 rifle one time. But Frank Clark, he owned a what was called a 25-35 rifle. <coughs> and this was a little bit bigger than my 25-20, so I have some idea of the the size of the rifle that Frank Clark was was using. Well, it was on a night similar to this. There was a, a little bit of moon. You can see that moon over there. That's just the kind of a moon that Frank Clark was looking at that night. And he had heard all these stories about this big grizzly bear and the different sheep herders in the area. And he wasn't the only one, but they were usually quite a bit of distance away from each other. One way down the canyon, another up the canyon, another one over this way. But they had been talking about sheep getting killed. They said that this old bear, and they always talked about this one bear, and they could identify him because they called him Old Three Toes. And I don't know just what happened that he was identified with just having three toes, but supposedly he had these three toes so they could identify him and they said that he would get into a herd of sheep and he would come in and uh, kill not necessarily because he was hungry but he just wanted to get in and slaughter sheep. Now bears, uh, what do you think bears eat? They eat uh, grass sometimes, they eat small rodents, they might eat a squirrel if they get hold of them, might eat a rabbit, uh, a lot of berries that they would find. Now uh, Bracken and Tyler, they do some hunting over here in Wyoming 
and they found some bear over there. In fact, they killed a bear. Uh, there are animals around here too. Some of you may not think that there are some uh, lions and bears in this country. Bracken, tell us what you saw up the canyon here, just uh, right where these kids were riding on their cycle last night. What did you see, Ron, or Bracken? Um, I was up there with my dog. We were riding on our four-wheeler. I had the spotlight. And I was just driving up through the canyon, and I shined the spotlight up on this rock up above me. And out walked a great big mountain lion. <gasps> Stretched on the rock right above me. Because at night, they're not as afraid. In the daytime, they'll try to avoid you, but at night, they know they can't be seen, other than I have the spotlight. And so I turned my four-wheeler around and took off back for home, but I still remember seeing him stretching out on top of that rock. But... So that's an example of the fact that there are wild animals right in our area, right where you kids were on the cycle. That, was good that could be uh, the dog after one right now. <laughs> <coughs> well, these bears, an old three toes, otherwise they got the name of Old Ephraim. He would come into these herd of sheep, and it's been told that he got into one herd one night, and he... He would come in and he killed uh, ten of them, or at least he wounded them. <coughs> and sometimes he wouldn't really kill the animal. What he would do, he'd tip them upside down and rip at their belly and open up their belly and then eat the soft part of their belly. Now we talk about porcupines. You know, when we're lost in the mountains, the survival skills tell us if we will get a porcupine, tip him upside down, and, uh, you can hit them on the nose, you can kill them, but you can get into their belly, which is quite easily accessible, get in there and uh, cut them open and eat them up. Well, that's what this old bear was doing. He would come into a herd and he would swing his big paws and he would uh, kill them or wound them. And one time Frank Clark said he came upon a herd of sheep that had been attacked by these bear, this bear and he had to take his rifle and kill three or four of them because all that big bear had done is wound them. And he, he did away with them and finished the rest of them.